Hi everyone, Joey from dayjobhacks.com. In this video, I want to do a quick tutorial on Google Display Network and how to avoid the biggest mistakes and how to avoid losing a ton of money right away on Google Display Network, okay? So I've spent a lot of money on Google Ads over the last few years. As you can see, this is one of my accounts here. I'll refresh it so you know that I'm not just making this a screenshot. Now, I've sent a lot of traffic through Google Display and Google Search, and I wanted to show three uh, very common mistakes that people make with Google Display Network and talk about the difference between search and Google Display. Now, as you continue with affiliate marketing in particular, if you're an affiliate, um, you may think that Google is, uh, you know, cracking down on affiliates and they don't like affiliate marketers. But in reality, Google will allow you to run ads as an affiliate, assuming that you have a very high content rich website and you're providing value to the users of Facebook. Now, if you try and run, I don't know why it's taking so long. If you try and run a, a landing page, you're, so you're setting up Google ads to go to a landing page and your landing page only has one thin page of information and you have no real content on your website, then you're going to find that Google will ban you or they will block your ads because you're breaking the rules of the, the, the main rule, which is using a bridge page, which is just kind of a simple little page that is useless to their, to their network. Okay. So really you can run ads as an affiliate, but just make sure you have a really high content rich website so the difference between the search ad and the display ad quickly for people that are just tuning in here um, when I go to Google and I search for something like dog treats for example these these this type of advertising is very in market I guess is the word they use it's very uh, people that are going to the search uh, function on Google are specifically looking for something they're in the market of what they're searching okay and so there it's very high intent traffic and it is more um, effective in terms of getting people to convert right away I find anyway so if I'm coming here and I'm searching dog treats when I come here this person is you know set up an ad here well this is a big store here they they're, they're selling dog treats immediately okay and they're obviously you know happy to promote this through a search ad because I'm looking for dog treats I'm probably not looking for anything else right now so they'll put their ads up and they'll have you know really high intent users clicking on their ads now the difference between that is when I go to Google and say I'm searching how to train my dog you know I'm just kinda looking for information I'm going around and let's say I click on this website here how to completely train my dog I'm looking for info and I'm not really looking to buy anything I'm just kinda reading around and I might get displayed some type of advertisement you can see this one's loading here right now for some reason my internet's being really slow so you can see here I'm getting an advertisement and this is a Google ad okay so this is a display ad somebody signed up to Google Display Network and set up ads to display pet related products to people reading pet related websites now the website owner here signed up to AdSense so this website owner is getting paid every time somebody clicks on this ad and AdSense which is another Google product is paying the person that owns this website okay and somebody else is paying Google to put this ad here so Google is technically the middle entity between the person who bought the ad and the website owner okay so the website owner is actually getting a cut of the commission here or the the cost of the click so you can see that this type of advertisement isn't as effective because really I'm not really in the market right right yet I'm just kind of looking for information while I am a dog owner I, I mean that is a targeted ad I'm still not really in the market so it's interruptive so you need to really have a high engaging type of ad and you need to make sure that you you know test and tweak and and do the right things with your advertisements to make sure that they work okay because you can see I'm also getting ads for a credit card over here which is kinda not even related to dogs and it's still a Google ad right so let's talk about some of the things that you can do when you're first setting up your campaigns okay so I'm not gonna talk too much about search here because search is, is a totally different type of traffic where you're setting up your ads to target keywords that people are searching in Google Display Network you can lose a lot of money but you can also scale a lot more than you can with search because only so many people are searching 
for dog treats, okay? And and you're going to be competing with everyone else that's bidding on this keyword. However, with Google Display Network, there are millions and millions of websites out there and and probably millions just around the pet niche that you can target and find and you can probably get a lot cheaper traffic, okay? So let's go in and show you. I, I set up a sample campaign here just to kind of... Um, give you an example of a, a mistake, some of the mistakes you can make when you first set up your Google Display campaign. So the, as you can see, I set up this campaign here. It's, it's spent $1.65. I just wanted to get a little bit of data in here so we could, so you'd have an example of what I'm talking about. One of the first mistakes people make is that they allow mobile apps to eat up most of their budget. And they don't even realize this unless they're doing, you know, in-depth tracking. Most of the training at powerhouseaffiliate.com where we talk a lot about buying traffic and getting traffic to your websites as an affiliate, we talk about using a tracking platform. Uh, we recommend using places like BMob or CPV Lab Pro, what I use. But you can see inside these tracking platforms where all your traffic is coming from. But you can also see it inside Google Ads here, but it's just not as... Uh, granular and it's and you can't see the click-through rates of your landing page and all that stuff without a third-party tracking platform like BMob or something else but anyway in here you'll see you can click on placements okay and once you have some traffic coming in you can click on where my ads showed and in here you're going to see that as I set this up most of the traffic immediately started coming from these mobile apps okay Google is just going to fire this mobile app traffic and eat up your budget, okay? That's what's going to happen. So this is likely kids playing with their parents' phones, fingers going everywhere, clicking your ads, and eating up your budget, okay? Kids are basically killing your display ad campaigns. I've seen that saying out there on the internet already, uh, and it's true. I give my kids uh, the phone sometimes, and I can see them just clicking ads, and then I have to go over and close the ad and then put the game back on for them, okay? So this is what happens. So how do you block these? You go to exclusions, and you can simply block. You can see I've already done it here just to show that you can exclude all of these apps, but you can't just do it with one blanket exclusion you have to actually go in and block all the categories so you can come in here click exclude placements and here you can come down and select app categories so what I've done is I've actually just blocked all of the Windows phone apps and you can then show all of these categories all 56 I've clicked on all of them and don't forget to click these arrows down because each of these have subcategories that you also have to click so you need to click them all and then once you've done that do the same thing for the Apple App Store and block all of those as well and then come down and click save okay and now you'll be blocking all of the the apps okay now it doesn't mean that you can't make money with the Google apps or the or the app traffic. It's just that you don't want to have it eating up a budget if you're going to try and do site placements, okay? So start your, your campaign and separate them. If you want to run mobile app only, then do that on a different campaign. It'll be a lot cheaper, but um, it probably won't be as effective because it's very interruptive. People are playing games. It's most likely a child playing a game, and it's just going to eat up your budget, okay? So... That is the first thing you need to consider. Now, the other thing you want to do, uh, a, a mistake, I guess, is by putting too many layers of, of targeting onto your campaign, okay? So as you can see here, in a Google Display campaign, you can set it up to target keywords, okay? So you can do keywords and you can enter in, like, say, if I want to do dog treats again, I can say anything related to dog treats and people, Google will look at what people have been doing in their past <laughs> browsing history if they've been searching for dog treats or if they've been visiting dog treat websites then they're gonna likely see your ads you can also target audiences so you can say pet owners or stuff like that and then Google will try and find websites that are related to that audience you can set up demographics where they live all that kind of stuff okay then you can set up specific placements so if you find a website for example let's say this dog training site say I want to put my wet my ad right here then I can take this domain here and I can target that specific domain just by going to the placements setting okay um, and I'll show you that in a second because I think 
when you first start out, it's better to be granular, especially if you don't have a large budget. Um, it's, it's probably best to go out and pick out 15 to 20 domains that you think would be great for, or, or that would have the audience that would be interested in what you want to, to sell. Because you'll find if you, if you give Google the option to just pick what websites they want to put your ads on, uh, most of the time you're going to get a whole bunch of irrelevant websites in your list of where your ads actually showed, okay? So if you want to start with a low budget and you want to go in and just granularly pick website placements, then do that through the placements here and you can edit your placements and you can do it right here and you can add a placement. So let's say I wanted to add the dog training website. First, I would select my ad group here and then I can go and I can add a website right here. So let's just say, I know that site is delivering ads. You can see it's right here, the sprucepets.com. And it's estimating about 10 to 15 million impressions per week, which is quite impressive, actually. I never even would have thought of that. But you can see, I guess that kind of proves how, um, how great it is to be on the first page of Google when you're doing uh, search engine optimization. Because all I searched was, how to train my dog and this person's website showed up, okay? So it's obviously a very large website, 10 million impressions a week, which is very impressive, okay? Um, so if I wanted my ad to just show here, if, I'm, if I had a, you know, a, a, let's say I'm selling pet CBD, okay? Um, something that is a new product, it's a CPA offer, actually you can get it on an affiliate network and you wanted to sell pet CBD, I'm not sure if that would be uh, compliant with Google ads, but, if you wanted to, you could put your ad on this website and people now that are coming here would see your advertisement for the pet CBD and away you go. If they click on it, they go to your landing page and, and away you go, okay? So that is the, 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 the second thing to focus on is just kind of start granularly and then go up because Google will eat up your budget so fast you can blow it within minutes, okay? Um, the last thing I would recommend is a low bid. Even though if you block all your, your placements here and you're going... Um, you know, with specific placements, start low and then scale up. Um, because if you go too high, you are going to blow again your budget within a few minutes, uh, sometimes like minutes, sometimes within an hour. Once the ads are approved, it just blows past and it'll actually go over your budget. So if I set $200 a day, it could go up to 280, 300, um, over. Okay. So, or like it would be 300 total and then it would stop. So they don't have enough, um, control to even stop the the blast of traffic that you're going to get so the lower the bid the better at first when you're first starting out now a couple more things to consider when you're running google display ads is once you find some really good placements separate them into different campaigns or different ad groups um, test multiple landing pages you're going to find that your click-through rates are a lot less on Google display ads. So make sure you have a bunch of uh, landing pages. Now with Google, you have to go with parallel tracking, which means you can't use redirects anymore. You can't use your tracking links from, from your BMOB or CPV labs. You have to use parallel tracking, which they have capability to do. But now you have to test one page per ad group unless you set up experiments and stuff like that. That's more advanced stuff. We'll get into it later in later videos. Now, I'm going to end the video here on this Google Display Network tutorial. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I go into these types of tutorials all the time, show actual live campaigns. And if you want to see actual live campaigns where I've shown the ads, shown the landing pages, shown everything about it, um, we have a Google Ads case study inside powerhouseaffiliate.com. Go there, sign up for free, and get the premium membership if you want access to the case studies that actually show real-life campaigns running right now. Anyway, I hope you liked that video. Again, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next videos.